Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 27th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, Brad wrote about uh, Iced ID or BogBot and they gave us an update on some of the latest tricks that this malware family is up to. Aside of using Google Ads, which is sort of uh, one of the infection uh, vectors that has become really popular the last few months as the bad guys figured out that's pretty easy and cheap. Another trick that it's playing with malicious emails is, first of all, OneNote files, another sort of uh, current uh, infection vector is really popular. And secondly, it's also using .url files. Another new trick here is that it's using HTTP methods associated with WebDAV. WebDAV, I believe SharePoint uses it. I've seen it sort of more in the earlier days of the web uh, to uh, essentially sort of update websites and the like. But uh, prop find is the HTTP method that's associated with WebDAV that's uh, being used in these latest attacks. and. If you're looking at HTTP traffic, this should really uh, stick out and be something uh, that uh, shouldn't be too hard to identify as abnormal. More indicators of compromise and other details you can find in Brad's uh, diary, which of course is linked to in the show notes. And DDA is just not running out of ideas on how to make his famous Oli dump tool more useful, not that it's... uh, not useful already. MSI files is the latest file type that uh, DDA added to OliDump via a specific OliDump uh, plugin, plugin msi.py. MSI files are essentially Windows installer files, so often used to install malicious software. And this plugin gives you sort of some basic information, metadata style information from the MSI file to hopefully figure out whether or not a particular file is malicious or not. And of course, DD has a walkthrough using an actual malicious sample to show you how to use this plugin and what the output looks like and what to look for. And Microsoft's 365 Defender team has an interesting blog post how they are automatically disrupting business email compromise and ransomware attacks. One thing I sort of find particularly interesting here is sort of the kind of signals, basically what they're using here as input in order uh, to disrupt these attacks. This is an option if you are, of course, a Microsoft 365 customer, so you can disable this feature now. The attack flow that they're sort of looking for here is, first of all, a phishing email, then also repeated uh, multi-factor authentication prompts in order to exploit multi-factor authentication fatigue. Later, and I find this actually a pretty sort of interesting thing that you may be able to adapt uh, for yourself as well is mailbox searches for interesting email threats for business email compromise. An attacker often attempts to inject themselves into sort of payment, uh, invoice related email threats. So uh, this is kind of what they're looking for here and for the creation of inbox rules that will also forward respective emails. Interesting kind of approach here, and I really like sort of those uh, behavioral indicators, something that you can use yourself as well. I know some organizations already went ahead and, for example, prevent the creation of some inbox roles in particular if uh, they involve forwarding emails to external uh, destinations. Kind of nice of Microsoft to let us look a little bit behind the curtain what they're doing and not just uh, to basically make you enable a black box without really knowing what it's looking for. And then we got a couple of patches worth mentioning here. Cisco released updates, two of the uh, 
high risk vulnerabilities here are first of all in Cisco's application policy infrastructure controller and cloud network controller. It's a cross-site request forgery attack. And uh, this is sometimes a little bit hard to get a handle on kind of as to their criticality. But in this case, an attacker is able to essentially get access to the web-based admin interface by just tricking the victim into clicking on a link. So it's not phishing in the sense that you have to trick the victim into going to your, your website and entering credentials, just clicking the link, which gets them to their legitimate uh, system will trigger the exploit here that gives the attacker access. Also a uh, high risk vulnerability in the Nexus 9000 fabric switch that uh, is a vulnerability in the link layer discovery protocol LDP and uh, attacker without actually authenticating is able to manipulate these LLDP packets uh, to launch a denial of service attack. Denial of service here means that the device will reboot. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. If I missed any stories, uh, let me know. Let me know if there are any stories that I should have covered. Someone actually sent me a story earlier. Didn't quite make it into uh, this version of the podcast. Maybe uh, I'll uh, manage this tomorrow. But uh, please let me know if I miss anything. I gladly learn about new sources or to look up uh, for stories that you're interested in. Thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.